Dr. Fizz, Theoretical Physics, Chapter X, Einstein and the Procession of the Perihelion. One of the most profound calculations in the history of physics, Einstein's general theory of relativity, conceived by aesthetics, the beauty of the equations, and a calculation that traditionally can take 10 pages to arrive at Mercury's strange advance of its perihelion. But first, let's look at, in this section, the gravitational effect on time. Well, in a previous video, we showed that clocks run slower on the ground floor compared to clocks high in the atmosphere, but there the gravitational constant situation is now no longer applicable because we need to deal with long distances where the inverse square law has to be used. Near the surface of the Earth we just use mg, but now we have to use the big G. And a nice way to arrive at the potential energy, if you can think of Hooke's law, when you have a string pulling you back, you fight that by pulling in the opposite direction with a plus kx and stretch here, let's say from 0 to x, e uh, 0 be equilibrium, then you get 1 half kx squared, that's the work you do, and we call that the potential energy. If you should release the mass on the spring, it will then gain speed as this potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. Note that the derivative of u with respect to x gives kx, and if you put the minus sign in, you get the restoring force. So that's how you can check very quickly potential energy and your force by taking the negative, the derivative, and here the derivative with respect to r would pull down a minus to cancel that, and you get r squared, but introducing this minus sign overall will get you the right formula. So that's our potential energy. Now we're going to look at a photon that is traveling from very far away at infinity down to the star. So at infinity we have no potential energy since R is infinity. It's infinite. And when we get to the bottom, the bottom here refers to some R away from the star but kind of close to the star. So we then replace the mass here with the equivalent mass of the photon e equals mc squared and that's our Planck constant times the frequency and this is the bottom place at r and here there is no mass to worry about. Then when we do that we get this equation where the Planck constant cancels out everywhere and we can factor out f bottom and this formula compares to the one we arrived at earlier uh, however we don't have the time yet so we want to do the flip the reciprocal the, the period is 1 over f and this would be like our ticking clock the t so we flip everything to get that the reciprocal of everything and then we notice that we want to solve for the bottom one. The clock at the bottom is the one, see here, that is slower. And that's analogous to what we did in an earlier video on Earth. We showed that the bottom clock was slower compared to the top clock, the clock that was higher up. And we have a similar situation, more general though now, for R where you have the inverse square law. So that's the formula for the little ticking of the clock t prime dt prime near the star is here running slower than the ticking dt at infinity. So uh, that is what we're going to do for this video and we'll continue with the next video to talk about space.